Welcome everybody to The Candle Enthusiast. I am your host, Shane Carlson, and this is Smell It Sunday, a weekly live stream where we sit down and we talk about candles. Go figure, right? We talk about candles, we talk about aroma, we talk about things that are nostalgic, we talk about really everything. Uh, but today, let's lower this music just a little bit. Today, we're going to be doing something that's a little bit strange for me, to be honest. I pride myself in the fact that I produce family-friendly content. So I want to apologize in advance. If anyone is offended by the candle that we're going to be speaking about today, as some of you may know, most of you may know, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, the actress, uh, with her brand Goop, which is sort of her life lifestyle brand, she's uh, she a while back has uh, picked up a candle uh, that she's selling on her website, and it just went crazy. It was all over the news. It was all over the internet, social media, Twitter. Uh, I don't need to make any jokes because the jokes have already been made. Uh, the candle is called, um, well, um, it's called This Smells Like My Vagina. Excuse me, but I had to say it. For all you families who are watching this right now, I apologize. Uh, but yeah, a lot of you folks reached out to me, uh, you know, kind of jokingly and said, you know, Shane, why don't you, uh, evaluate this candle? And, you know, I chuckled, uh, and, uh, but after so many comments and messages, I said, you know what, this is, this is kind of a big thing uh, across social media in the candle, you know, in the candle industry. I feel like it's my responsibility to at least show you this candle and share my thoughts. So I made the purchase. Uh, the candle is not made by Gwyneth Paltrow. It's uh, actually made by a, a fantastic brand. I've never burned any of their candles. They're really more of a, a perfume company, uh, but it's called Heretic Perfume. So I really don't believe she had any input uh, on this candle. Maybe she came up with the name. But we're going to be doing an unboxing. I have not smelled this candle. It's uh, It arrived in the mail several days ago, and I've been waiting to open it in front of the camera. So let us get started uh, right now, because to be honest with you, I want to get this out of the way. Um, but I have high hopes that maybe this is going to be could be something pretty special. I'm always saying I like things that are outside the box. Um, and this certainly is a concept that falls into that category. So uh, let me pull up you guys. We are going live. This, uh, just as a reminder, is Aromatically Speaking, my second channel. I'm sorry I have to keep saying this all, all the time, but it's it's really important that I do because all of my future candle content will be on this channel. Uh, so let me pull you guys up and see what we're doing. Feel free to join the chat area. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. I can see you all. Um, Omega says, forget Paltrow and go to Washington Wicks. We will be doing an unboxing of uh, Washington Wicks, obviously a Washington-based candle company. Uh, the proprietor is a fantastic friend of mine. She's incredibly talented, and uh, I've worked with her numerous times. Uh, so make sure you hang in tight. And if you're watching this later and you're not interested in the, the Paltrow candle, you can just fast forward. But um, we got we got to do this. We got to do this. Hello, everybody. I will be focusing my attention to the chat area in a little bit, but I want to get to this. Are you guys ready? Let's do it. Um, 
Pam. Okay, so here is the box. <sighs> Can't smell anything. And we need a knife. I always keep it right there. At least a couple for situations just like this. Now, let me know, has anyone actually purchased this candle or even considered it? Let me know in the chat area. All right. Or has anyone purchased anything from uh, this brand, Goop, before? And I think there's a documentary out of some kind. About this company. It's been around for several years now. So inside the box, we have this little pamphlet. Let's see what is inside here. This just looks like a receipt. Yes. Thank you for reminding me that I spent that much money on this candle. Thank you. I will keep that receipt. All right. Okay, so now I'm smelling. And to be, uh, you know, in all honesty here, look, I mean, this is uh, the, the company who makes this, Heretic. Like I said, I have not burned any of their products, but they're a very well-respected luxury perfume company, but respected luxury candle company. So I'm not expecting this to be a novelty of any kind. In fact, I expect this to be um, top-notch. I, I really do. I don't know if it'll be something that I will particularly enjoy. So there it is, just in case you didn't believe me. So again, a uh, heretic, can't read that, is uh, the producer, and there is the name, I'm not gonna say it again, and on the bottom, a bougie, a perfume, high quality stuff, you know? You see those on fancy candles? Wow. Wow. All right, here we go. Is anyone else excited? Is anyone excited? Come on. No lid. Not even a little cardboard thing. That does bother me a little bit. Here we go. Let's give this a sniff. Well, uh, right off the bat, I, I, I'm, I'm okay. So I'm happy. I'm happy. Why am I happy? Because I didn't want to tear down this candle. I didn't want to make fun of this candle. That's not the purpose of uh, this video, nor is it the purpose why uh, I purchased this candle. Um, like I said, this uh, is something that's big that happened in the candle industry, and it should be addressed. And this really smells amazing. It smells fantastic. This has those qualities of luxury candles, like the ones I'm always talking about, you know, uh, Diptyque, Votivo, the, the higher priced uh, candles. And what I mean by that is that this is not made up of, and I, I know this, because of the description of this candle, but this is not made with fragrance oils, meaning oils that are made in the lab, uh, made with uh, aldehydes, you know, synthetic compound, not synthetic, organic compounds, but that are blended uh, to uh, mimic uh, certain fragrances. This candle is, uh, if it may have some essential oils in it, meaning it's derived 
uh, from the actual uh, ingredients. Um, it may have some essential oils. Essential oils is going to be a, a distillation process. But when we see this this word absolute, you know, like uh, 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 rose absolute, actually most rose is essential oil, but absolute means that it's made with a, a solvent. It's, uh, let's say we take a bunch of biomass, roses, um, and we put it in something that will dissolve the material, the biomass, to extract uh, the oils inside of the product. So again, not artificial. This is something that I'm sure the ingredients in here is something that would also be in a high quality uh, and very expensive, probably cologne or perfume. But the aroma profile, I'm trying to put the, the, the name out of my head for a second, but really pretty florals uh, and not you know I'm not a big monstrous floral person, but this has a lot of florals in it, and it, but it, it's different in that it's it's soft, it's gentle. Um, you know th what I'm always saying about the white blossoms and the more fruitier, soft, uh, fruitier, softer, uh, less aggressive uh, 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 types of florals. Let's see if I can actually pinpoint anything. Um, I would say rosy. Uh, I, I, I said rose just as a hypothetical, but ro uh, rose um, or uh, geranium, anything that has that, uh, that muskiness, that leathery quality. Uh, when we smell flowers, not the pungent lilies, but more of the musky rose. A lot of green notes too. Um, that kind of comes hand in hand with florals of this type. But there's a little bit of this clean, uh, clean uh, grass. Not not freshly cut grass. Not saturated grass. Uh, not uh, like weak grass juice, not super pungent green, not headache inducing, but there is uh, an, a very nice complementing green quality to the florals. And although it doesn't smell earthy, uh, it doesn't smell like earth or minerality, that green in the floral is taking me there. Like, um, you know, if we take a chunk of, let's say grass, right? We uh, rip a bunch of grass out of the ground by its roots and we have the soil dangling on top or sod, if you've ever laid sod down before, but the dangling roots, um, that s smell of uh, the part of the grass that's just underneath the earth. It is that very fertile, uh, earthy smell, not like dirt, earthy. Herbals, uh, uh, herb notes have to be addressed. Um, Although, I'm trying to figure which one I would want to go with. Let's say herbal more in, um, like a citrusy pine. Uh, and speaking of citrus, uh, we're getting, I mean, I should be talking about this first, but this candle is you know part of the reason why i think the florals aren't too big too dominant too strong too powerful too overbearing too cloying is because uh you know it's it's balanced right with big brightness not a sour brightness uh but uh, just a big uh, citrus uh, presence uh, both in the juice and in the zest uh, i would not be surprised at all if uh, this is a bergamot situation but if we just say lemon, lime, uh, 
just to keep it simple for now, I think that would be perfectly fine. There's a, a mossy, uh, like a, uh, uh, like an oak moss and vetiver quality. And uh, what those two things will do, will add to that fresh grass experience. Uh, vetiver is, uh, is a tropical grass, but uh, it, it, it smells like roots, um, you know, and uh, it can smell really f fruity too at, at times. And uh, the, 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 the oak moss um, is uh, certainly something that will add to a gentle green aroma. This is not easy, guys. But it's, it, it's, it's musky. And I guess this is where I think if I had to choose masculine, feminine, I would say feminine. And the reason why is because this is musky. In fact, I think that's probably the first word that came to mind when I thought, uh, when I smelled this candle, was musky. And trying to, it was just trying to pinpoint it. I wanted to give myself some time. It's just not an aggressive musk, you know. It doesn't have that musk like, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, like a, a men's cologne. One of those aggressive men's colognes. This is more of like Jovan's white musk. It's, it's again, like in your mind, just imagine like soft little white petals or, you know, uh, pink blossoms, even though that's not what I'm smelling, but that's the visual that comes to mind. And an exotic wood, I would say, uh, this could be oud, oud wood, this could be teak wood, we could even call this sandalwood because everyone's sandalwood is completely different. So, uh, no, there's no question about it. I think that smelling that cold um, is. I think it, I think that's an exceptional smelling candle. And thank you so much. I'm just seeing right here Stephanie Hall with. The super chat, uh, sending a couple bucks your way, and Michelle Watson. Shane wanted to say hi from Australia. All the best to you, loving the live. Thank you so much, Michelle uh, and Stephanie, for the super chats. Um, uh, I really think this is a fantastic smelling candle. Conceptually, it makes sense, right? Okay, I'm trying to be as serious as I can, but. Uh, if we're if with a name like uh, this smells like my vagina, vagina, right? We think of literary um, metaphors, symbols, analogies, uh, innuendos, if you will, of uh, the female anatomy, and you know, of course, florals, blossoms, petals, um, and even a little bit of this fruitiness that we've seen here. Uh, no, not kidding. Um, and I kind of wish I said this before, but maybe even perhaps like a little bit of peachiness to it. Uh, peach is the number one, I think, I think I read that somewhere, the number one literary uh, reference uh, for uh, the female anatomy. Uh, so conceptually, it does work. Does it need to be called that, this name? Uh, why not? You know what? Um, this thing sold out immediately when it hit social media completely sold out it was going for hundreds of dollars on ebay here's the thing they just made more uh so but uh no question that it was kind of its own little sensation here's the thing price point 75 dollars that's not crazy we've seen a lot more than that um but um you know um you know upwards $280 for a Tom Ford candle, right? Um, but do I think you could get something like this, a really high quality candle, luxury candle, uh, for, for a smaller price point? Because no, there's no, there's no part of my mind that even doubts that a part of the price of this candle it's obviously not the packaging because this is there was no packaging 
um, and it's certainly not the vessel. What you're paying for is the popularity uh, and I suppose the scarcity of the candle. So uh, if, if you have this candle and if you have an extra couple bucks or if you find this humorous or sexy in some kind of way, uh, go for it. But I do think you could find, I could recommend something like this for you uh, in the price point of like 30 to $45, maybe even a little bit less. Let's see if we can uh, look a little bit more of get some information on this candle. I mean, it really is a, a beautiful vessel, that matte black. thing is what I hate about matte black finishes or matte anything is fingerprints. And I don't see that. That's just my OCD. Uh, it looks like a, a white paper label. Uh, but it does have a sheen to it, a little bit of shine, a little bit of brilliance. So it's pretty. Um, we have a white wax. We'll find out a little bit more of the details of this candle. Uh, let's just go over to the website to check this out and see if we can get, see how much I can embarrass myself, how much I got right.
by Heretic, sold by Goop, $75. I am going to be making a full video on this candle. Uh, the reason I actually bought this candle wasn't to do an unboxing. Uh, what I'm going to do with this candle as soon as the, the you know, this coronavirus situation, um, hopefully when it blows over soon, hopefully, uh, I'm going to do one of my old fashioned out and about walk about uh, videos where I'm going to just go to different storefronts, uh, you know, places that sell sexy things, you know, like lingerie. I was thinking that'd be a cool idea. Places that sell perfume, places that sell, um, of course, candles, uh, boutique shops. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to break it down. I may do my evaluation at the end of the video, but I think what's more important is to get other people's reaction to this candle. Um, because this way it's not just coming to me. You guys know I'm always positive and always trying to look on the bright side of things, but I, I think this is something that I really am curious if people can get down with this idea uh, or if it's something that, um, uh, I don't know, maybe it's uh, really all just a social media thing and that's the only reason but like i said i haven't burned the candle but for a luxury candle medium maybe even a medium minus intensity on the nose um, i think this could be a product that uh, could be sold cheaper that that is for sure but without question um we do have to remember that you know essential oils absolutes actually didn't say anything about essential oils but it did say um it had absolutes in it which is a very very tedious very expensive uh, uh process and, and and ingredient to put into fragrance products so there it is this candle will make uh an appearance and uh hopefully a fun edited out and about video when everything blows over and you know we're all allowed to go back outside let's check in with you folks um i'm trying to look through your comments here audio is lost you gotta be kidding me uh, is the audio back? Thumbs up or thumbs down? I apologize about that, folks. Hopefully it wasn't for too long. Oh, and Nikki, yes, I chose this for you today. Please someone give me thumbs up if audio is on or off this was a gift from nikki from washington wicks which is a perfect segue uh last halloween and uh i thought i'd break it out today it's cool it's a. Uh, it's actually made of like uh it's it, it's made out of bamboo that's awesome compressed bamboo it's the first time i'm getting to use it It was lost when I was showing the website. That has happened before. I'm just gonna have to edit that part out. Okay. So let's do this. Washington Wicks. So just for you uh, folks who aren't familiar with Washington Wicks, uh, Nikki Gessler, um, the the brainchild, the creator of Washington Wicks, uh, the candle maker, uh, has been producing candles, correct me if I'm wrong, Nikki, for, for two plus years. And uh, I actually talked some uh, about her candles. Some I talked about some of her candles yesterday on a live. And, uh, you know, she's no question very passionate. You know, when you're starting making candles from scratch, not that I've ever made candles but you know whew, 
that smells good. I have no idea what's in there. Uh, when you start making candles, there's a lot of, like with any art forms, a lot of trial and error. And, you know, if, you know, if you can get through those hurdles of all of like the, 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 the failures and stuff and actually come through and c consistently make great products like Nikki is making, it's just, it's so great. Uh, and it's, it's what's special for me is that I actually watched, you know, fr from the point where Nikki said, I'm going to start making candles uh, to where she is now. And uh, and she's done it in a very short period of time. So I highly, highly recommend you visit uh, Washington Wicks on Etsy. I will show you guys that page in just a little bit. All right, I'm gonna keep this here so I can't see what's inside. Nikki did tell me to read this note. Shane, here are a few goodies for you I thought you'd enjoy. I coffee from my favorite local roaster, one. Two, Coraline inspired wax melts, Coraline, as in the stop motion animation, I'm guessing. Uh, the key is a bottle opener, but reminds me of the movie. Three, the world's worst gum. She sent me candy. The world's worst gum. I like this, and I can't back out, because I said if you guys ever sent me a candy of any kind, and that also goes with, like, other things, too. If you sent me uh, certain products, I won't get into that now. I promise to, 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 to use them on a live. If you want to send me anything, P.O. Box information in the description below. Um, I found this book at an estate sale. Note inside. Coffee bean wax. I think that's what I smelled immediately when I opened up this box. Coffee bean wax melt made with nine bar beans. Nine bar being a producer and part of my morning ritual. Wax melt collection. Last but not least, the world's hottest gummy bear. The world's hottest gummy bear. This suddenly has taken a turn. Um... I dare you to eat it on a live show. Hope you are doing good in these times, crazy times. Thanks for keeping us entertained, Nikki. Nikki, thank you so much. Uh, not only do I appreciate the thought and the effort and the candles that you send, the wax that you send, uh, but by sending extras to keep us entertained. This is insane. All right. To Shane from Dash. Dash is the man, the little man. Um, and he's also uh, one of my uh, favorite candles from Washington Wicks. Dash is Nikki's little boy. And we have a nine bar espresso um, out of Vancouver, Washington. I have never tried nine bar. I am familiar. Oh, this is great. Thank you so much for this. Uh, this is great. You know why? Because I said to you guys multiple times, I'm going to be doing more coffee content, uh, lives, edited videos, uh, going to be brewing coffee, showing you the stuff, the crazy stuff I do in the kitchen to make my coffee in the morning. So this gives me a perfect uh, opportunity to uh, try this coffee, uh, maybe brew it in several, several different ways and compare the different brewing methods. So perfect. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you very much. Okay, I need those notes again. Look at these. Uh, be honest. Jello shots. Do you guys do them? Did you do them in college? Do you have jello shots? Well, these are wax shots that Nikki produces. I, I love these. I'm not a big like wax melter. I'm all about the flame. I'm 
all about the flame. I'm all about the ritual of lighting wicks. However, um, <laughs> this is not even a joke. I had a bunch of these from Nikki, um, and I wanted to I wanted to melt them because they smelled so great. So I broke out one of my um, uh, tart warmers from Yankee Candle. It's a cool little coffee pot tart warmer. And I just started melting them up. And since then, I have actually have been using, I have been melting wax. So I guess I can change. This one is called, oh man. Let's see if we can get that in focus. This has to be a reference to something. Why be Levat? Don't make fun. Don't make fun. Why be Levat? Is it like, what is this? Um, it says watermelons, dirt, sour gummies. I love you, Nikki. This is amazing. It's like, like you are eating watermelon in the summertime, you dropped it in the dirt, and you're like, you know what? Fourth of July comes only but once a year. I'm picking this thing up and eating it. And I'm, I'm serious, like this is outside the box, this is bold, this is different. This might sound like novelty. There's something about this that really works in a really elegant way. I, I'm, I'm completely serious. Um, you know, you get the watermelon, the sour candy, the, or the sour gummies just enhances the, the, the water, the authentic watermelon into kind of like a candy-esque, you know, it doesn't smell like a Jolly Rancher uh, watermelon, but you know, it's the same kind of deal, right? It just adds that candy-fied aroma to it. And this dirt thing, very prominent. And if you're st thinking for a second, like this is nuts and you wouldn't want to smell this, please, please, uh, these are the things you have to open your mind up to. At least that is my suggestion to everybody, to expand your aromatic horizons because this dirt is coming off kind of peppery, um, like a cracked black pepper. Uh, and although it, very, it smells very much like a dirt, it's, it's a beautiful, contrast not compliment we're talking about contrast we have a big juicy watermelon candy fied but earthiness uh underneath that serves as a little bit of this spice and believe it or not that dirt uh you know kind of turns this into a little bit of i wouldn't say cologne but w would i would i say that somebody Man, a man or a woman would wear this as a fragrance? Yeah, I think so. If this was in a spray format, I'd spray this in my car. I like that a lot. I want to know the, the name. What's going on with the name? Let's see if I can read the comments. Can't wait for gummy bear. Super funny. I used to love jello shots, says Stephanie. YB Lavat. He's the strange boy in Coraline. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, I'm a big Jim Selleck fan um, and Nightmare Before Christmas. Huge stop motion animation fan, but I, I haven't seen Coraline in a really long time. Um, so now, but now that it's being mentioned that it is a reference um is that a reference i could see that being a reference but this is a Coraline. another what do we call these wax shots now i have to remember i read it too quickly the key is so awesome what is the key uh you guys probably remember, but I was just reading it so fast. There's so many things. The key is a bottle opener, 
but reminds me of the movie uh, Coraline. Well, this is what I'll promise to you, Nikki. I will watch Coraline. I'll put it like next on my queue of movies to watch because I need movies to watch. And it's something I should see. But look how beautiful that key is. You know, I, growing up, I was a huge, and still am, a Houdini fan, Harry Houdini. Um, so I remember when eBay was first a thing, when eBay first came out, uh, I would buy old keys, old skeleton keys, antique keys, uh, because back then I could get them for cheap. Um, but uh, that really just came from my love of... Um, magic and Harry Houdini but that is beautiful I'm trying to think I got to do something with that I'll figure a good way to use this or display that I should say oh my god what is it what is that is this is this the gum wait a minute you can't mean that this is the worst gum because this stuff is childhood in a package. Fruit stripe gum. This is so nostalgic, guys. Oh, man. If you want to just feel good inside, uh, seriously, uh, why, you know, if you're stuck at home uh, like a lot of us are, go on YouTube and just YouTube search for old commercials for products that you love or maybe products that you've never even heard of uh, 70s commercials 80s television commercials i'm telling you, it, it it just it's such a great way to get that nostalgic fix um, and uh, i'm saying that because uh, i remember just recently i was watching a bunch of fruit stripe uh, gum commercials and this gum is uh, although a lot of us probably remember this from the 80s and the 90s or at least I do. Um, it's it's uh, it's it's actually much older than that. Nikki, is this the gum? I think she said yes. That is it. Here's the gummy bear. Oh, what on earth? Gotta smell that Coraline candle. I haven't forgotten. Oh, man. This is cool. Um, talk about nostalgia. Mad Doctors, Monsters, and Mummies. This is definitely uh, at least a little bit vintage. Probably very much uh, vintage. I'm going to read that note in a second. But what these are... Yes, they are. They're lobby cards. So lobby cards back in the day, um, you know, when you would go to a movie house, not a cineplex, but a movie house, they would have a little, um, Joseph, thank you so much for the super chat, buddy. Great Halloween episode yesterday. Thank you. I appreciate that. A little Halloween in the spring is always fun. Uh, lobby cards are um, on easels. They would put them in easels. And, you know, uh, it's kind of a forgotten thing because a lot of people collect posters, but a lot of the lobby cards uh, are so much cooler. And these are all, you know, science fiction, horror, monster, and my father's favorite monster, uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon, this being um, uh, the second installment, Revenge of the Creature. This is awesome. This is awesome. Are you sure you didn't look this up? This might be worth something. You're gonna you're gonna kill yourself if this is something that uh, you gave away and it's worth some money. To Shane, make the world a better place. So happy to have our friendship. All my love, Nikki. Right here. Uh, saw this at an estate sale. Estate sale. Thought of you. I know you'd appreciate how cool and offbeat these movies seem to be. Uh, I wouldn't give, I wouldn't give, what I wouldn't give to be able to uh, watch these films. Yeah, you know, my brother, my oldest brother is, he's like the king of obscure movies. He's seen more movies probably than any person I've ever met. 
and uh, I bet you he would know a bunch of these. The Tingler, I've seen that one. Vincent Price, rent that one. I'm gonna give this a good look through. Thank you so much for that, Nikki. So, we gotta smell the candle. The Coraline candle, blue, I shouldn't be reading the fragrance sounds, Blue's, blue raspberry, cotton candy, fizzy soda pop. I mean, how could you not? How could you not? Um, okay. Somebody can look it up for me. I can't remember. The Starburst, there was the original, there was a blue that was tropical. I think it was tropical. But then there was a green Starburst package. I can't remember what it was called. There's definitely that slush puppy, uh, maybe not so much icy, but you know, the sour slush puppy, sour snow cone, uh, um, you know, fictitious fruit of that blue raspberry, even though there is a thing called blue raspberry. I mean, this smells like you're at one of those those, you know, back in the day when you're, you're, you're pumping the, the, the slush puppy thing, you know, and you're mixing all the flavors. They have them now in the, 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 the bigger gas stations, right? They're all automated. Just hit buttons. Wow. That isn't, you know what? Like, And the cotton candy, even though cotton candy is a soft aroma, right? Soft, sweet aroma. And that blue raspberry really pops. The cotton candy is still popping. It's still popping, man. It's like, um, you know, enhanced. So, like, you know, if they made... Uh, let's stick with gum since we're talking about gum. But... Um, you know, I'm sure there's a cotton candy gum at some point that was made. You know, just big time cotton candy flavor. And that black or the blue raspberry is very citrusy. Uh, so it's very tart, um, very tart. Like this smells sour in the greatest way. Fizzy soda pop. Yeah, you know what? And this kind of corresponds with a recent Instagram post I just made. And I wonder, I wonder if there's any chance, um, that's a long shot, if Nikki was thinking about this, but blue cream soda. Whew. Okay, so yes, blue cream soda, it, it's just got food dye in it. But when I was a kid, it was such a treat. But blue raspberry, blue cotton candy, blue cream soda, I think that, there might be a chance there, but it does, my point is, it does smell uh, creamy, uh, frothy, uh, like a cream soda. <sighs> Let me smell the other one real quick. These are, these are great, thank you. These are great. So the, do these come in, let everyone know if these come in candle formats, because, um, I'm just honestly going to go out on a limb and just say, um, if you, you know my taste. If you've watched me long enough, everyone kind of knows my taste. If you're nostalgic about candy, like if you're nostalgic about soda pop, I, I don't drink or, uh, soda pop. I, I don't eat candy, but it doesn't mean I, when I don't see, when I see it in the store, if I see photos, it, it, it doesn't mean I, it still doesn't get me excited. Uh, so having things like this in candle form is a way to kind of relive the past um, without actually consuming these kinds of things. Um, and um, I can't decide which, I think this one is, th that dirt, that's, I mean, that's borderline brilliance. Um, but this one really pulls at the candy store, soda pop store, heartstrings for me. 
I'm recommending them. Um, I don't, you know, I don't say that a lot. I don't just come out and say, uh, I recommend a candle, check it out. But you can just buy those little wax shots, right? This is going on display. In fact, I want to put it by the candle. All right. So I'm guessing this is the gum. This is what we're doing now. I hope Shane doesn't eat the wax melt, says Nicole. And this is the gummy bear. Look at the look at this packaging. Let me move down here. Uh, so you guys can see it. Um, little little nitro, the world's hottest gummy bear. Where on earth would you buy something like this? This is not coming from the grocery store. Um, let's get a little bit more light. Come on now, come on. Oh, that's too much light. That is the gummy bear. Uh, it says flammable, which is, is dangerous. And it also has a warning, some, uh, some fire extinguishers and a serious amount of flames. And this looks like a gunpowder barrel the backdrop it reads this product is extremely spicy and has the potential to cause cause this is not fake this is really this is a real warning this product is extremely spicy and has the potential to cause skin and or mouth irritation little nitro the world's hottest gummy bear is intended for adults only and should be kept out of the reach of children and pets. Little Nitro is not to be consumed by those with any heart or respira respiratory conditions. Consume at your own risk. And I have to read, I just have to read all this. Consumer beware, this is not your ordinary gummy bear from Flamethrower Candle Company. Um, comes the next experience for those who seek the heat. Little Nitro has been infused with our signature 9 million Scoville unit chili extract, making him 900 times hotter than a jalapeno. I'm actually quite terrified. Do you dare... Uh, do you dare this uh, 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 fiery gummy bear? Um... I have the feeling I want to try the disgusting gum first. My question is, what on earth is this? The this is the gum, right? Please tell me this is the gum, or is this the wax melt? If I eat this and it's wax, because if you're talking about fruit stripe being the worst gum in the world, that can't be true. Somebody chime in and tell me if I'm going to eat wax. No, this is, this is the wax. I was going to eat this. I was going to eat this. And you guys were going to allow me to do it. Because I'm now remembering the note. This is a coffee, a beautiful uh, coffee uh, wax melt. And I'm always always looking for oh my god you know a really really good authentic espresso uh fragrance so we have real coffee again i'm remembering now it's from nine bar coffee so it's infused with real coffee grounds and it's uh been poured into a coffee bean mold which is what it looked like Although I thought this was the most disgusting gum in the world and I was going to chew it. Thank God it smelled like coffee. That it actually is very, very good. I get the smokiness of the espresso. I get the nuttiness of the espresso. The caramel notes of coffee beans. And it smells like, you know, that beautiful crema. You know, that nice foamy cream uh, when you get your espresso the cream, the crema, the, the foamy coffee on top of your espresso shot. But it's still sweet. Um, it doesn't smell like sweetened coffee.
but it has uh, a sweet note to it. This really is as close as I've smelled to an authentic coffee bean candle or wax scent fragrance meaning um, if you're looking for like a mug of coffee this will definitely work but if you like if you really want to like find a, a fragrance that mimics that smell if you've ever been into a coffee roasters when they're actually roasting the coffee the smell it's even better than the smell of brewing coffee for those of you who don't drink coffee and you're like i like the smell of coffee when it's brewing but i don't like drinking coffee well if you like the smell of brewing coffee the smell of the coffee beans roasting oh my god I used to do it. I used to roast my own coffee beans in college with one of those popcorn, hot air popcorn poppers. And my neighbors uh, uh, would come to the knock on the apartment and be like, what's going on? Is there a cafe in here? That's really good. That's really good. Um, highly recommend that. This will probably be the first I will melt. I'm going to melt all three of these. And soon I'm not I'm gonna purposely not put them on my shelves I'm gonna bring them up uh, to the tart warm and put them right next to it so I can get to it so this is the worst gum in the world fruit striped gum I'll be honest with you I think it's nostalgic I never used to buy it I've had it I never used to buy it okay there's so one left one thing left to do here I mean, this has the potential of being really, really bad. Um, but we got to do it, right? It smells fruity. But you know what? I think I'm smelling the wax melt. Look at this. Oh, look at this. Check this out. Maybe we can post this and win a contest based on my reaction how cool would that be right so it's saying right here i'm guessing it's saying to post videos of you eating this on youtube we want you to make the best little nitro video on the internet post your video to youtube with the hashtag little nitro challenge for a chance to be featured on our website and social media platforms Fully chew this fiery bear and see if you can handle the heat. Can you go a full five minutes without relief? I have a feeling that this live is going to come to an abrupt halt. Guys, I don't want to postpone this on you, the anticipation, but there's other things we got to do in this live. So I think we need to save this for the end of the live. I apologize because you're probably in suspense right now and want to see me um, in pain. Uh, I will eat that. I will not back out, but we do have uh, some Q&A to do. Um, let's see if the audio cuts out again. But uh, actually, I won't do that. Let's just, let's get to the Q&A. Dun, dun, dun. It seems so quiet in here. I usually don't have music playing, but it seems so quiet. Uh, where's Facebook? Okay, so this is a good time to uh, promote the Candle Enthusiast Facebook fan group. If you are not there, if you are not a part of the Facebook fan group, the Candle Enthusiast, uh, highly recommend it. I say it every live stream. It's just the greatest way to uh, uh, become a part of the candle enthusiast community. It's not just about me. It's not just about candles. Uh, it's just a place where uh, we have a lot of like-minded folks who've come together. And it's still, in my opinion, the most friendly, informative, fun uh, candle uh, group on Facebook. And... Uh, Nope, don't want to do that. Don't want to go back to that. All right, 
So Q&A, here we go. So if you go to the Facebook fan group, every week before the live, uh, I post a place where you can leave a question for the end of the live streams. Um, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up the comments. If you want to see if you can run over now, if you haven't left a comment and leave one, feel free to do so because it doesn't look like we have too many questions today. Let's give this a go. Stephanie Hall says, uh, I was actually hoping to get some wine pairings for vegetarian meals. I enjoy red and white wine. I was thinking something for hearty dishes like stews or casseroles. Also something for lighter fare like vegetables and salads. Don't forget desserts. Thank you. I'm sure you'll come up with some great options. Uh, I would love to give you, uh, Stephanie, like in-depth um, you know, figure out what your palate is into um, and kind of give you a larger list. But I can throw, it, uh, you know, some places to start with uh, vegetarian meals. You know, this is, uh, you know, a question, you know, uh, for any of you guys who don't know, I, I worked in the wine industry for many years, and this is the question I would get nearly several times a day. So, um Let's see, what kind of dishes? Hearty dishes like stews or casseroles. So here's the thing. Uh, keeping it very simple, the more fat that is in the dish, the higher acidity and tannin. Tannin is that gripping sensation on your tongue. It's, it's you know, the majority of tannin is all in red wine. It's not really, there's not much tannin in white wine. It's that gripping sensation, right? Like when you're, you know, that, like, uh, you know, really big Cabernet Sauvignon, right? Uh, what happens is with a fatty dish, uh, it coats your, your tongue, your palate, the fat does, uh, so that when you drink a young wine that has a lot of this tannin, um, it's going to protect your tongue. It almost serves as like a lubricant on your tongue so the tannin doesn't cling to your tongue, allowing the flavors of the wine to really uh, come through uh, on the palate. So drinking young wine, red, young red wine, it's always going to be big in tannin, especially if it's like a Napa Cab. But a way to battle that is fat in the dish. So that's just a basic statement um, where the acid is going to uh, take the fat that's on the palate and cleanse your mouth, right? Think about what is in mouthwash, alcohol, acid, right? Like Listerine, what does it do? It cleans our mouth. The alcohol, or I should say the acidity in the, 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 the Listerine, for example, strips away any residue in the mouth. So having the high acid, having the big tannin is going to be really good for fatty dishes. So you're saying hearty dishes like stew's casserole. So what you want to do is kind of find, uh, if you go to the wine store, ask about the tannin level and the acidity based on the fat level in the dish. If you have something that's not really fatty, you know, a good red wine would be uh, something older or aged, uh, but you could certainly do, um, you know, uh, if you we want to do like a Pinot Noir, for example. Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir is a very delicate red wine, the, the, the most delicate of red wines, um, but something that's probably a little bit more affordable and one of the most underappreciated wines um, these days. Cru Beaujolais. So in the Burgundy region of France, um, there's the, the southernmost region in the Burgundy area is uh, a, a place called Beaujolais. And uh, they make several different kinds of wines. You'll see Beaujolais Nouveau. If you want to have fun with that at like a holiday party, fine. But otherwise, stay away from it. Then there's Beaujolais Village, which is good quality. It's aged in oak but it's still a very moderate uh, moderate red grape. It's not monstrous. It's made with the Gamay grape. Um, and uh, then there's Beaujolais Cru, which I think there's right now, is there 13 Cru locations? Cru just means the best, uh, historically. 
Uh, so you can get an amazing bottle of Cru Beaujolais for like $30. And when I say amazing, like if it was just from a different region in France, it would be like $75. So for a hearty dish casserole and you want to go red wine, I'm going to point you to the Beaujolais uh, section of your um, uh, local uh, wine shop. They should have a few bottles in stock. And if you're going to go with a white wine, same principles. But here's the thing. Um, with a white wine, you're not going to get the tannin, so you want even higher acidity. And the best way to go there is sparkling wine. Sparkling wine, champagne, even uh, s sparkling wine that's not made with the champagne method. Uh, like, say, Prosecco. Prosecco is made like soda. It's not made like real champagne where it's fermented in the bottle. It, you know, sparkling wine just kind of is a blanket term for all uh, wines with bubbles. But uh, the bubbles in sparkling wine is, it's CO2, and it's actually, it works on the palate like acid. So, you know, uh, sparkling wines usually have high acid to begin with, but when you add that CO2, it increases the overall acidity level. And that's going to be this razor sharp acidity on the palate. And that's really good for uh, light dishes, anything from like a salad to a moderate fatty dish. Uh, and you can even go uh, with a sweet dish um, with uh, sparkling wine. And you don't even have to get a sweeter style sparkling wine for it to go with dessert. And you're saying also something like vegetables and salads. So yeah, um, if uh, sparkling wine, or if you really want to go for great value, I always point people to a, a Portuguese wine called Vino Verde, green wine, Vino Verde. Uh, you know, if you have a Trader Joe's next to you, you can find an absolutely like really decent bottle of Vino Verde for like nine bucks. It's slightly effervescent. It's not sparkling, but it's got a little bit of effervescence, a little bit of bubbles. And don't forget dessert. So dessert, you want to match the sweetness, right? So the sweet, the sweetness in the dessert, if it's something savory, um, again, you know, savory is going to imply salt and, and fat, right? Uh, so use the principles I was just talking about. But if you're having something that's got like caramel sauce or honey or you know, uh, something with a, a really sugary compote. Um, you, what you want to do is you don't want to go with a wine that's dry, uh, completely dry, because the sweetness of the dish is just going to kind of mask the flavor of the wine. So uh, uh, a demi-sec, a demi-sec sparkling wine would work. You know, it still has some residual sugar in it, uh, but why not? Uh, I got to go with this. You could do port. Port is going to be a fortified uh, wine. Um, you can go with ice wine. Um, look these up if you don't know what they are. Really interesting wines made through very, um, in, you know, all of sweet wines are usually made with high quality sweet wines are made with very unique, in a unique process that's different from just, you know, how regular wine is made. Ice wine is actually frozen grapes. It's it's insane, the work that's involved. But uh, just a late harvest wine. Late harvest is when they leave the grapes on the vine longer than they usually would pick them. You know, most grapes are picked, it doesn't matter where you are in the Northern Hemisphere. The harvest is like late August to Halloween at the latest. That's harvest season. But if you leave the grapes on the vine until December, the grapes are going to continue to sit in the vine. The sun is going to dehydrate uh, and evaporate all of the water inside of the grapes. You know, they take the big plump grapes. They're going to start to shrivel up just like raisins, right? So all of the, the water evaporates, but it continues to ripen. The, sh the acidity levels go down and the sugar levels go up. As a grape ripens, that's the process. The acid goes down and the, the sweetness goes up. And when you take the water out of that and you press these late harvest grapes, you're not pressing juice, you're pressing syrup, thick, thick, thick syrup. So when that is fermented, um, 
you know, it'll get to about 15% alcohol, but after about 15% alcohol, uh, the fermentation process stops. You know, yeast really can't survive in that environment above 15, 15.5% alcohol. There's always variances, but uh, usually that's where f fermentation will halt, but there's still so, so much sugar left in uh, the solution. So uh, it's a very thick, uh, viscous, uh, you know, uh, 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 sweet and still high in acidity, an incredibly concentrated beverage. Some of the best uh, late harvest wines, if you've ever heard of Chateau de Chem uh, from France, definitely, I don't think anyone can afford a bottle of that stuff, but uh, they make uh, they make late harvest wines on the West Coast. They make late harvest wines here in New York. They might even make, um, yeah, they might even make late harvest wines in Virginia, which is a great uh, wine region. So pairing that with anything with like cheese, nuts, coated in honey, um, you know, uh, even like a chocolate lava cake with some sea salt, uh, you're going to be able to match the sweetness of the dish with that late harvest wine. Woo! I am sorry for anyone who hates wine because that was a long explanation, but I enjoyed it. Um, uh, I'm checking the comments here. You sound like Miles in the movie Sideways. Yes. Uh, thank you. I, I love that movie. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I've always loved that movie. And Stephanie says, thank you. You're very welcome. Hopefully I didn't put anyone to sleep. Let's read other questions here. Uh, Nikki says, yay. Unboxing is going to be fun. It absolutely was, except for this gummy bear. Are you considering making three wicks? I think that's a question for Nikki. Are you considering making three wicks, says Galenda. Uh, hi, Shane. What do you prefer in the large jars? One or two wicks? I'm guessing, Tina, you're referring to Yankee Candle. When it comes to Yankee Candle specifically, I am a house warmer. Paraffin wax, 22-ounce um, uh, jar guy, apothecary jar, right? Um, it's, you know, uh, for other candle companies, I will do the softer wax. I love two wicks, but Yankee Candle, for me, it's all about tradition. I always go with the house warmer paraffin single wick. Thank you for that question. Great question. All right, we got more. What are some really strong candle scents? I don't like weak candles, says Amanda. Um, so this kind of goes back to what I was saying about luxury candles. And because I, I was talking about one today, uh, I brought one out. I'm always talking about this candle company. And uh, I wanted to bring this out to show you the packaging. You know, I saw, you know, a lot of the times I'm saying you're paying for packaging. Yeah, you're paying for packaging in this situation. But look at this. This is a, a product by Votivo. This candle is Velvet Night, and it is sadly retired. Um, but their holiday boxes, their holiday collection come in these boxes. Um, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. You know, the, the, the Gwyneth Paltrow candle was just simply card, like thin cardboard. But look at this. I mean, this is like a, a treasure chest, uh, thick stock, and you need these heavy boxes for Votivo candles because they are so potent and aromatic. I'm sorry, I'm not going to unravel this. Um, these are, uh, I, I just, you know, this is one I'm definitely hanging on to. Uh, but you see, you know, this is, you know, that's a small candle. I think this is what, eight, eight ounces? Um might be might be less um but i'm telling you don't be deceived by the size Whew. these uh, votivo makes massively intense candles and they have a large 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 selection of all different kinds everything from like 
fun and childlike to uh, really uh, luxurious and sophisticated to, um, you know, things that, um, um, you know, the, again, I think people know me and Votivo. I think the, 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 the thing that people remember the most is when I evaluated the teak Votivo candle in uh, Stockbridge, Massachusetts, one of my first videos when I was in the bathrobe. Uh, but, you know, something like this, um, uh, this collection will run you about 40 bucks. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a price tag, but it's not $75. Uh, but you know, this is something you don't have to burn for 10 hours to fill up your space. You can burn this for an hour and you're going to smell it in a large space. You can burn it for a shorter amount of time. If you're going to burn this in your bedroom, you know, this is for special occasions. This is like the champagne of candles. You break this out for special occasions and you don't have to burn it in one shot. When you're done, put it back in the box, put it back in the shelf and wait for the next special occasion. So I'm going to point uh, you to um, Votivo for if you want high intensity candles. Um, Votivo is the way to go. And they're really kind folks too. All right. What is one scent that evokes a strong, vivid memory of your past? Says Jenna. So I did read some of these questions before I went live, and I'm glad I did because I collected some candles because I read this question. Uh, this might seem like, you know, uh, this this choice I'm about to show you might seem like something that you know, like, uh, you know, that's very odd that you would choose this to be uh, something that is very nostalgic or rem reminds you of a very profound moment. How did, how did Jenna phrase it? evokes a strong vivid memory of your past um, but this one always has done it to me and so much so that i very rarely burn it because i don't want to become i don't want to change that association um, you know this is a what seems like a very simplistic candle a simplistic name excuse the mason jar uh, some of you guys know why these are in mason jars, earthquake. Uh, but this was a, an older eucalyptus by Yankee Candle that I had. Yes, this smells like eucalyptus, and we're familiar with the eucalyptus tea, eucalyptus soap, and eucalyptus is in everything these days. But there's something about this candle that is beyond just eucalyptus. It's not just eucalyptus, and I actually don't know the fragrance notes on the top of my head, but there's a very big lime uh, and pine and uh, this medicinal smell uh, that's in here and a cooling sensation that's in here. And, you know, I know you guys, a lot of you are probably saying, well, why, you know, what's good about medicinal? Medicinal is not always bad, right? Medicinal is, uh, um, you know, it, it can be great. It can be great in wine, medicinal smells. Uh, it's a common descriptor that I use in wines. Uh, but medicinal in an herbal way. And I think the reason why, um, I know the reason why this pulls at my heartstrings or it reminds me of a profound moment from my childhood because I had a Muppet Babies, that's right, a Muppet Babies scratch and sniff book that had not eucalyptus, it was... It must have been pine, but for whatever reason, it smelled exactly like this. When I smell this candle, I can remember exactly where I was sitting, what I was seeing, the size of the book, the page of the book, the artwork of the book, and I was probably about three, four years old, maybe even younger. I have very early memories of my childhood and uh, when I was of this, this memory. And it's just a testament to if I, you know, 
If I had never smelled this candle, I probably never would have remembered that memory of sitting down with this Muppet baby scratch and sniff book because I don't have it. My parents don't have it. I've looked for it. I have no idea where it is, but I remember I remember the book. It had a spiral spine, like whatever you call those spiral spines. Um, and this is what the lime smelled like in the book. So is that a, a great story? No, but I think I needed to share that because, um, yeah, I, it's, um, like I said, I think it's aroma really, um, I think it's sometimes a far more powerful tool than we, we give it credit for. I was debating whether or not to show this one because I want to do something fun with this candle right here. I should turn this light off. This is uh, the, one of the World's Journey Collection candles from Yankee Candle. Um, these were sold in retail stores, but then really just became, um, you know, outlets, outlet exclusives. Uh, but I don't know. These were just great, great candles. Most of them were paraffin. This was before they were doing the soft uh, wax in the tumblers, the two-wick tumblers. It's always fun when you get a paraffin in a uh, paraffin wax Yankee candle in a tumbler. I can't find the label. There it is. And this is Bavarian pretzel. Bavarian pretzel. And this is... I grew up in New York. I live in New York now. Uh, and the smell from the earliest age of stepping out of Grand Central Station and smelling uh, that that charcoal, that smoke, that warm, soft pretzel, uh, the saltiness uh, in the air. I know this is called Bavarian pretzel, but uh, it reminds me of, uh, it just reminds me of New York. It reminds me of New York City. It reminds me of going to see the, the Yankees or the Mets when I was a kid uh, and getting the pretzels. So a very nostalgic thing for me. If you guys um, don't know about this candle, highly recommend it. I mean, this is not home fragrance. This is not something you're going to put in your bathroom, right? It's not going to be like, ooh, the bathroom smells from all the dirty laundry. Let's light a pretzel candle. No, this is purely for fun, nostalgia, and deliciousness factor. But uh, if you have uh, memories of soft pretzels like I do, I recommend looking for that candle. And the last one I chose here, I shouldn't have picked three, but I'm going to do it. Um, because no one seems to talk about this candle. And I wonder, I just, I wonder why. Um, we have a soft focus there, but uh, this is Yankee Candle's Christmas Tree. Christmas Tree. This was one of the re-releases, um, uh, I don't know, about two years ago. It's an updated photo. Uh, but this is a, a fairly old candle by Yankee Candle, um, and they brought it back for one year. But, you know, with all of the pine, Christmas tree, uh, Christmas wreath, mistletoe, all of the, the, the balsam and cedar candles that Yankee has every year, this one really, to me, is the full experience of going out and selecting that Christmas tree. God dang. Um, it's so good. I mean, it's honestly, you know, if, if you forced me to make an argument, because I wouldn't want to do this, but if you forced me to make an argument to say that this is Yankee Candle's best Christmas tree fragrance, I would take that challenge on. And I would even a bolder statement would say that when people are buying balsam and cedar, um, every year. I really think they should be buying this and and, and substituting it uh, uh, with balsam and cedar. At least try to for one year because this smells like pine trees, coniferous trees in so many ways. It's not a big pungent cedar, exp you know, uh, bomb. Uh, it's not overly pretty like balsam and cedar. Uh, it just smells authentic. I'm guessing there's a whole lot of different coniferous tree action here. Um, there's definitely some cypress because you get that zing that it smells like pine, but it ha cypress always has that little um, high tinge to it that makes it identifiable. 
Uh, but yeah, balsam, Douglas fir, whatever it may be, it's a Christmas tree. Uh, but you get those strong, robust uh, spruce notes um, and the twigs, the branches, the stuff that falls onto the ground underneath the tree out in the wilderness. And I don't know if there's vetiver in this candle, but it does smell earthy. It smells like, you know, Clark W. Griswold, right? When they had to rip the tree out of the ground because you're getting the roots, you're getting a little bit of the soil. That's why I think this is the epitome, the quintessential uh, uh, Christmas tree candle for the experience of going out and selecting your tree. And it's just, it also has that sticky sweetness you know you, you walk back to the car and you got the sap on your on your fingers or on your gloves you know that that terpene um that white substance um it's annoying uh to have it on your hands but it smells so good um so this is earthy it's robust it's rich wooden uh but it's citrus it has the citrusy pine and it has this uh like i said a little bit different take on a pine or coniferous tree you know the cypress is not usually in a christmas tree fragrance uh, maybe you know go crazy and say hemlock you know i'm not i'm not saying i smell hemlock but you know it's like it's not just the typical douglas fir uh spruce or balsam tree if you haven't tried this candle i check it out the reason why this is profound and meaningful to me is because i would go picking not picking, um, uh, go get a Christmas tree many years, not every year with, uh, my father. Um, so uh, just smelling that candle, man, I just, it's such a wonderful way, especially during Christmas, um, you know, to have a candle like that where, you know, I can just for, just for a moment, just for an evening, you know, have my father with me when I burn that candle, you know, it's, it, they're, they're, these are just candles guys, but man, you know, they really, if you allow them and, you know, you, you, you know, you, you don't, you're not afraid to just look at candles as home fragrance. If you allow yourself to uh, become emotional with these candles, they can really uh, enhance and help you, uh, enhance your life and help you. Um, and that's what's always intrigued me about candles. It's not so much about make the house smell pretty. It's about... Uh, where the candle can take you. Um, you know, I'm sorry if that's a little too sappy, but I'm pretty passionate when it comes to candles. Uh, what candles have you been most eager to find but haven't been able to, says Matt. Okay, so this is kind of an easy one too. The Yankee Candle Halloween, that is the name, Halloween, black band it's not that i can't find it i found it um but last time like for example last time it it, it popped up in on the internet it was at auction it was half burned and it sold for 237 dollars i think uh, what is this halloween candle for the, you for those of you who don't know uh well that's a, a it's a hard question. It's it's a very old, uh, the, probably the first or one of the first black band apothecary jar, house warmer jar, Halloween Yankee candles. It had a pumpkin on it. You can just Google it. You'll see it. It was simply called Halloween. And there's so few people in the world who own it. Um, and whenever I find people who own it, I reach out to them. I'm like, tell me what it smells like. Explain it to me. And they're like, ah, oh, I can't really tell, but it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I'm like, oh God, what does it smell like? I just want to smell it. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, so that is, you know, I have Yankee Candle Halloween fragrances that are much older than that. But that I think among Yankee Candle fans is like the treasure of all Yankee Candle Halloween candles as far as collectability. Um, some, it was released somewhere in 1994, 1995 with uh, Trick or Treat, the original Trick or Treat. Thanks, Matt. Um, what is your favorite Halloween candle, says Amanda. 
Witch's Brew. I mean, I'm sorry that these are easy. Uh, Witch's Brew just, you know, uh, again, is just one I'm, um, I'm crazy about. Uh, but I'll give you a second one. Uh, if we're talking about more contemporary, I'll say Black Magic. But if not Witch's Brew, I would say uh, the Happy Halloween, which was the, the black licorice root beer... Uh, root beer float vanilla heavy uh, candle that they no longer make but I'm guessing they may bring it back this year I would put money on that Shane I'm a good friend of Nikki's and I say don't eat nitro don't do it that is perfect segue I'm gonna do it I have to do it um, how many people we got 35 people in the house at least I'm not doing it for anyone all right I'll do this the one thing I ask if you're sitting by the computer and you have the ability to hit the thumbs up please hit the thumbs up because I'm about to eat little nitro um, and I don't know how long the, the live is going to last after that you know because this has the potential of being a disaster I do have water, but water's not good, right, for hot stuff. And who knows? Maybe, just maybe, we can win a contest if my reaction's good enough. That's it. I mean, that that is like, that's, um, you know, your eyes do not deceive you. That is an ordinary size gummy bear. But remember, 900 times hotter than a jalapeno and I should be careful not to touch this and then touch my eyes if I start touching my eyes remind me are you guys come on Todd Kramer says, the pain is only in your head. Yes, Todd. Pain. This pain is just an illusion, right? Pain, is, pain isn't tangible. It's not real. You can't touch it. It's just a sensation. Let's get a close-up. Look, I've spent the night alone in the Lizzie Borden house. I've gotten locked in ancient cemeteries. I can do very precarious things. But I've never done um, like a, a hot pepper challenge. Here we go. And they said to fully chew it. Heat is there fast, but it's not outrageous heat. Until you swallow. It tastes like a hot pepper. Like when they said chili extract. Well, that wasn't a lie. comes the hiccups <laughs> sorry for the noises oh yeah It's like, um, um, like ignited fumes going down the gullet. <sighs> I gotta chew this thing. 
I gotta chew it. Okay. It's gone. Hmm. How do I look? I look pale. I'm crying a little bit. Oh. Oh. Trying to stay away from that water. But you know what? No. No. Lizzie Board would not be proud. Oh. Kids, don't try it. It hurts in the stomach. Whew. Yeah, that is a sensation and a half. Guys, I'm not going to be able to talk for long. But I did it. I did it. It's still very, very hot. You better give me a thumbs up for this. Whew. And Nikki. Look at this. Tears. Whew. Nikki's getting payback. Whew. That's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you for joining Smell It Sunday, where we do sometimes crazy things. We smell things that smell good. Uh, we talk about nostalgia. We have uh, we have bad gum, and we have hot gummy bears. Little nitro. I want everyone to have a wonderful Sunday. Go uh, spend some time with the family. Maybe step outside, somewhere safe. Uh, as a little burp. Have a good time. Do something. Uh, do something fun. Watch a movie tonight. I'll be seeing you folks soon. But until then, be good. Make sure to like and subscribe, and click that little bell to be notified on future videos. And uploads. And uh, maybe support uh, the Candle Enthusiast channel by buying a t shirt at the Candle Enthusiast. That spreadshirt.com. I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, but I think it's time to close the live. Thank you all for joining. I will be seeing you soon. But until then, be good, be safe. And have a fantastic rest of your weekend. I'm going to go drink some milk. Have a good one. Whew.